Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel and this video is going to be a guide in which I will show you how to acquire the rather rare weapon, the Junk Jet. The first way is to be on the quest Call to Arms. To get this we will need to come to the Cambridge Police Station, which on the map is north-northwest of Diamond City. Once here, fight off the ghouls and be sure to speak to Paladin Dance. After agreeing to help him, you will begin the quest Call to Arms. The next stage is to head to the building Arc Jet Systems, which can be found to the northwest of Diamond City. and. Be be warned, come prepared for a very tough fight, as there is quite literally a legion of synths inside this building. Inside the rocket control room, we will find this table with the junk jet on it. Before you jet, be sure to grab that junk. And the second way to acquire the junk jet during a random encounter, if you are very lucky, you will run into Manta Man. You will only be able to run into Manta Man after you have finished the Silver Shroud questline. Manta Man believes himself to be the hubris comic superhero of the same name, traveling the commonwealth to fight evil. And because the junk jet cannot properly be used by NPCs, Manta Man is unable to equip it and is reduced to fighting with his fists if attacked by enemies while wandering the wasteland. As a result, despite his above average health, he tends to fare extremely poorly in combat. So if you want the junk jet, be sure to kill him, or do some tricky stuff with pickpocketing. As always, I have reduced all of my character's special attributes, that's 2-1. I also have no bobblehead, perk, or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. So let's get straight to the modding. We're going to be adding the long barrel, which gives it superior range and sighted accuracy, better recoil and poor hip fire accuracy. Secondly, we're going to be adding the recoil compensating stock, which grants us exceptional recoil. We will be throwing on the gunner sight to get better focus and sighted accuracy. And lastly, for the muzzle, we can either add the electrification module, which adds 15 electrical damage to each shot, or what we're going to be going with is the ignition module, which adds 16 fire damage to each shot. So now that we have modded it out, we have the Flaming Junk Jet. It has a base ballistic damage of 40, a base fire energy damage of 16, its fire rate is 20, its range is 203, its accuracy is 84, its weight is 39.9, and its value is 520 caps. Now when reloading, all you need to do is take it out and click the reload button. This will bring up a special Junk Jet reloading menu. On the left we have your inventory, and on the right we have what is loaded into the Junk Jet. And in the middle we have a little spinning hologram of the item that you're going to be putting in if you so choose. What is very nice is that underneath the picture of the item it tells you what crafting materials you would get from that item. So before using something very valuable as ammunition you can decide not to because it might have some very valuable crafting materials in it. So now the junk jet which could have been renamed the United Airlines is a little bit similar to the rocket launcher. The junk jet fires any junk item loaded into its hopper such as a wrench. Items must be loaded in manually as we know and fired items can be picked up after being shot, making this a ranged weapon with, theoretically, unlimited ammunition. It also has no hard limit to its magazine capacity. There does not seem to be any container limit, but the contained junk items still count towards your entire character's weight. Therefore, the practical ammunition capacity is highly subjective, and it is only dependent on how much weight in your junk you are willing to carry. But because of this very unique loading mechanism, it essentially has the same mechanics as the legendary effect never ending. Because you can fire the weapon indefinitely without any reload needed until the hopper is exhausted. The ammunition counter will never show more than 900 no matter how much is loaded into the hopper. The damage per shot and damage per second values are uncertain as the junk jet does more damage if the shot is charged for approximately one second. It is currently unclear whether the 40 damage is the base damage per shot or the charged damage. Although with my excellent fallout intuition I would believe that that 40 is the normal uncharged shot damage, and that the charged shot would be around double the damage. Now the range limitations on the weapon are largely irrelevant as projectiles follow a parabolic trajectory dropping significantly beyond effective pistol range. This makes the weapon impractical for long range fire, unless you the player are talented enough to lob shots and still hit the target. One very effective strategy for the junk jet is to use a common light item. Steel works well as you can quickly refill by scrapping near worthless weapons at a workbench. Another strategy strategy is to use something with zero carry weight such as pre-war money. So although the junk jet currently weighs 39.9 pounds, provided you use weightless junk items as ammunition, in survival mode this might be a viable weapon, although I truly don't think so. The junk jet is really just a bit of fun in the true Fallout style, a goofy weapon doing goofy things. With a base damage of 40, it's not too impressive. With its massive weight and potential massive ammunition weight, doesn't really make it too appealing for strategic use. 
However, this gun, as you've probably witnessed already, is quite buggy. In practice, items will about 10% of the time be lost upon contact with the enemy as they are no longer interactable. This sometimes results in flung items floating in the air with no support, unable to be picked up or moved, as they are now static meshes and not actual items in the world. So if you did plan to use this weapon and then pick up all of your ammunition shot, then this might change your mind. It might come in handy if you're, say, at your settlement and it's being attacked, and you run out of all other ammunition and you can pick up the junk jet and start shooting cat bowls at the enemy. In a very strange and Fallout-esque specific scenario like that, sure, the junk jet might be useful. But in every day out in the wasteland trying to survive, worrying about every milligram that you're carrying, the junk jet is not your friend. And sadly, as some of you may have been hoping, although this weapon does shoot junk, it cannot be loaded with my humor. And here it is, the junk jet in action. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and I do hope that you enjoyed this video and weapon guide for the Junk Jet. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.